All right, everybody. Good evening. God bless you. Woo! Whiskers tickling my nose. Always has it right when I go on air. D doesn't do it during the day, you know. All right. Praise the Lord. I love y'all. I love y'all dearly. Uh, we're getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer every second of every day. Amen. Y'all ready for an Alul rapture? Me, I'm ready for an Alul rapture, homeboy. Praise God. What is the date today, man? Today is what? Is it the 8th? The 9th? I can't remember. 9 something, isn't it? Alrighty. I hope you all had a good day. Hope you all are having a good hour, good minute right now. Walking with Jesus. Coming to encourage one another. Be encouraged. Hallelujah. That's our goal. Come gather around the, the Word of God. Jesus Christ. Make sure you know you're saved. Hell is forever. Hell is forever, man. And once you go there, you ain't getting out. And that's every... Why do I say it like that? Because that's everybody's default. George says, 8th of September and 9th of Av. How about that? I mean, come on, dude. Today's the bad day, the 9th of Av. That's when everything went bad for the temples. The temples burned to the ground and, you know, some bad history. The worst days in history on the Jewish calendar is this very day. Hmm. Thank you for that insight, brother. Vondel, man, says, read your Bible, read your Bible, read your Bible. 10 to 20 chapters a day. Listen to your audio Bible. Download the free ebook. Now, guys, download the free ebook. Read the commentary. You'll learn a lot there. A lot of your questions will be answered in reading the commentary of Sean and, of course, the translation, the very word of God in God's dialect. And Vondel says, today is 13 of 50. In counting to the olives, day 13, and day 111 overall. That's pretty cool, man, of 153. We've counted 111 days of 153 days. Amen. And God bless all who watch and share this ministry. Thank you, Kush. God bless you, brother. I am so glad to have you with us, all of our family. It's good to have our family with us. Guys, I, I, I wish you guys on YouTube over there could join us live. Become our friends here, our conversational, at the conversational friend level. That would be awesome. Uh, support Sean. Vondo has put his link up here, his PayPal link. Take care of him. Heather says, praise God, the thunders will set your doctrine straight, and sure they will. And she's referring to the Bible codes. God has let us know that the Bible codes of Sean Mitchell are the seven thunders that John the Apostle was not allowed to open. Because God had another fella designed to unseal them, and that was Sean Mitchell, the great, 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 great grandson of Moses. Hallelujah. And Sean Mitchell has found tons of unsealed codes, they were sealed at one time, in grandpappy's writings, the Torah. So God's given him the privilege to open up the Torah, the writings of his grandpappy, and find the wonderful secret hidden codes, the thunders. And those thunders will set your doctrine straight, and you had better have your doctrine set straight. Woo, the Jezebels are popping up. Jezebels hate Elijah, guys. Prophetic truth. They hate Elijah. And they'll come at Elijah. And I, I'm here to tell you, I am here to tell you, you're going to, if you're saved, let's just suppose you're saved, you're going to have to stand before Jesus with this. You better repent now. You better humble yourself. And become obedient unto Jesus, submissive unto Jesus, and quit hating God's men that he sends along to warn you. Israel's working on a peace deal with Saudi Arabia. Seems pretty ominous. I hear you, Alicia. Israel doesn't know it's the ninth of Ab. That's right. Right. They're 44 days too fast. That's right. It's just, it's incredible. It's incredible. And... The Christian church doesn't know it's the ninth of Av. All those guys are following the satanic calendar, the synagogue of Satan. <clears throat> hey, Devon. He says, hello, everybody. Praise God. Love you bunches. Love you bunches, man. Uh, Vondo also, he always says, uh, share our videos because we believe that 
we know, we know they're going to be eternal. We know they'll be working and being useful during the tribulation period. So share them and get them out there. Get the word out there, okay, guys? That's how, I mean, that's our call. Our call is to be witnesses. And you get the truth out there, this end time witness that nobody's witnessing. They're all watching football. <laughs> Do you guys know that the NFL just started? Do you guys know who made the official first touchdown in the NFL? And it's the 114th season of the NFL. Get rid of that zero and you got 14. You got rapture year. NFL's Nephilim. Okay? How the Nephilim can be praised. Demons. Demon worship is the NFL. Do you know who scored the first touchdown? Amon Ra. St. Brown. Amon Ra. The sun god Ra. A-M-O-N dash Ra. Amon Ra scored the first touchdown in the Nephilim games this year of the 104th season. He's got a brother, Amon Ra. St. Brown, he's got a brother. His name's Osiris. He plays football too. So we have Osiris and Amon Ra playing in the Nephilim games in the 104th year of the season. Detroit Lions wide receiver Amon Ra St. Brown scores NFL's first touchdown of 2023 via a drag route. Scripted or not, guys? Do you think that's scripted or was that just, you know, organic? There ain't nothing organic in pro sports. It's all Satan ran. Demon possession. Satan is the prince of the power of the air. Amen. So, there we go. Like, subscribe, and share the videos. And BitChute. Vonda always puts that BitChute link up here. Check out our YouTube and BitChute. And uh, become our become my friend over here so we can uh, you can be part of this live. All right. Okay. Why don't we, Vondo, is the next one we're looking at May 30th, the story of Noah, the wrath against the living was swift. Is that the next one we have up? May 30th, the wrath against the living was swift. I'm thinking that's the one we got next. But before we do that, how about this Hurricane Lee? Wow, rituals to the one world order, Nephilim worship. That's what it is. That's what it is. Praise God. Thank you for the daily encouragement, family. Amen. That's why we do this. Encourage one another and keep each other encouraged all along. Thanks, Vondo. This is the next one. Okay. But we got this Hurricane Lee roaming around. And you know what the name Lee means? Something to the sort of the safe side of something, out of the storm, out of the wind. It's kind of ironic being named Lee when it is the wind, when it is the storm. Amen? And then this uh, hurricane that took out the Gulf here in Florida, it had, it was a chick's name, but it had like Lee in the middle of it. So something, Idalia or something like that. And then now we got Lee pounding, coming in. And this is a storm of the Lord. Sean just said, you know what? I've not paid much attention to it, but bam. He said, I'm going to look it up in the codes and see what we got. And it's all over the place. Now, he hasn't given me a final version, just a, an example. He threw up an example. This is an example. It's called Hurricane Lee. The, the full word, Hurricane Lee to the USA. The name Lee comes from English word lay, which means clearing in the woods or a meadow. <laughs> okay. And what does Lee mean? That's not a, uh, a human being's name. Lee definition. The definition of Lee. <laughs> <clears throat> so, it, th this was just quickly, he come up with this thing, man. Uh, Lila says, hey, brothers and sisters. Well, hello to you, sister. God bless you. Praying for you. As we all overcome, we encourage each other, get up, get up, get up, let's go, let's go. We can either sit on the bench or we can complete our task. 
We encourage each other, come on, let's complete our task, man. Let's let's have some crowns to throw at Jesus' feet together, man. I want to be part of that gang. Part of that gang who's who's believers, who just loves our Lord. And we love him because he first loved us, and we love him 100%. Not this world, the things that are in the world. Amen. All right, so Sean, now, like I said, he, he just whipped this out and said, look how quick this is. Sheltered side of something, the, the side away from the wind, okay? This thing is the wind. This thing is, there is no shelter, amen? And so that's what Lee means, the sheltered side of something, side away from the wind. That's you and me. You, you and me, we're, we're safe from the storm. Jesus is our Lee, so this signature of this storm has God all over it. God wants you to be safe in his storm. God wants you to be safe in his tsunami, the safe side of the tsunami. Everybody tracking real close? That's what Lee means. And God is calling us to understand that he desires for us to be on the safe side of things. He's not willing that anybody should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen? And that's what Lee means. Hurricane Lee. He, he just whipped this one out quick. He said there's a bunch of them. Um, this one here is like at 111,000. He's got a bunch at 30,000. The smallest one with the entire name, Hurricane Lee, <clears throat> was just under ten, uh, just under 11,000. Uh, it was 10401, 1414 backwards with zeros in the middle. Skip, skip. 141. Amen. So here's what this says. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I apologize. It says, Hurricane Lee to the USA on the seventh day. Hmm. On the seventh day. That sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? Isn't that when New York City will be attacked? On the seventh day? I kind of think this is going to be a warning of sorts. And a last-minute warning? Sean says this is the last warning God's given out. Lee, 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 get in my safety. Get in my shelter. Get out of the wind. Get away from the wind. This is a hollering out from the Lord. And they, they have, they have the science to drive hurricanes. We've known about this for years, man. I forgot the, the operation, but it was back in the 50s. And a bunch of people in North Carolina got so angry when they found out because some of their loved ones were killed and all their property was destroyed over a man-made hurricane back in the 50s, okay? You know, right when the Project Paperclip guys come over and the alien stuff was real big and the alien movies, you know, the Day of the Dead, Dawn, Dawn of the Dead, and uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the list goes on. They, they were stealing God's thunder of his rapture way back then. Invasion of the body snatchers. That's going to be God snatching the bodies, not aliens. Okay? And it won't be an invasion. It's going to be an evacuation. Extraction. Get them out of here. Get my people out of here. Come to Lee. Come to the safe side of this wind. Out of the wind. Come to the shelter. Vondo says the Atlantic Ocean. Lindy says Amen. The Atlantic Ocean names for 2023 are Arlene, Brett, Cindy, Don, Emily, Franklin, Gert, Harold. Yeah, there's that. I, uh, where did it, it just pop? Some, something strange just happened. Uh, Idalia. Is that how you say that? Is, is that how you say that hurricane that just took out Florida? I was wondering if it was pronounced Leah with the, with the word Lee in it. Idalia, 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 something like that. Jose, uh, Katia, is that what like Katie but spelled different? Katia, Lee. Here we are with Lee, Margot, Nigel, Ophelia, Felipe, Rena, Sean, what? Tammy, Vince, and Whitney. How about that? I wonder what that Sean one's gonna do when it pops up. Where it's going to be. That's interesting. Very interesting. Same spelling. S-E-A-N. So when it comes down to the S's, it's going to be Sean that pops up. 
Okay, right now we're in the L's, Lee and whatever other ones are developing, tropical depressions and all that. We call it Idalia. You see that Lee in there, guys? Twice in a row. Thanks, brother. Idalia. Twice in a row we got Lee. Lee, Lee. The Lord's saying, get out of the storm. I have a friend who lost his entire everything in that storm. In Citrus County, Florida, lost it all. Lord's like, you don't need that anyway where you're going. Live for the kingdom, live for eternity. Come on, let's do this thing. Amen? Idalia, that's it. So we've had Lee, that she took out the, the west coast of Florida. Now we have Lee out there again, the male version. And God's warning, this is it, guys, this is it. You need to get on my side of safety. Get out of the wind, get, get in the shelter. Jesus Christ is the shelter. Jesus Christ is Noah's Ark, the wood. Oh, please come to Jesus today. Believe in his finished work. Believe and be saved, be saved, be saved. This is it. Guys, you've always known, some of you old timers, some of you folks are 70 years old that watch us. And some of you have been in church all your lives, and you've always heard about the rapture. And you've always heard about the end of days. Well, shouldn't it come sometime? Right now is it. This is it. We've come to the end of the line. This will be, or this already is, the 1,993rd year since Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. That leaves seven years to make it to 2,000. That'll complete day six. God said the six days of creation are equal to 1,000 years each. So that would be 6,000 years of time. One day equals 1,000 years. 1,000 years equals a day. So God created six days. There was work, toil, sweat, and then boom, a 1,000 year or a day of rest. So God has a 7,000-year timeline for humanity. Amen? And the day of man is about to end man's rule. And then God will take over himself, Jesus Christ, and he will rule that last 1,000 years of peace to show people how it's done. Okay? So man, Satan's son of man, Satan's son of perdition, right? Man of sin, that man, he'll have it for a quasi seven years. Three and a half years, he'll run it behind the scenes. And come on, guys, you need me. I, I, I can help you out. And da, da, da. Then he'll kind of work his way up, Secretary General of the United Nations, and then he'll just start popping things off. But he's at the beginning. He is the first seal of them all in the seven year tribulation and he he works it in two phases he works it all in the oh shucks guys phase until he gets killed then it's all the hell's breaking loose and you better do it as i say i'm coming after you phase when the devil enters him when his poppy enters him amen Catherine says amen this is it god bless you Catherine. love you dear ben says amen two thousand year ages this is it guys garris we read the book of Jonah this morning in Bible study, what the enemy meant for evil, God used for good. The other ship merchants ended up fearing the Lord and praising God, and so many incredible lessons. Boom. In such a small book. Amen. 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 God's will will be done. A fish saved a nation, the Assyrians in Nineveh. A fish, one fish. God prepared a fish, God prepared a gourd, and God prepared a worm. Boom. I love it. And so you'll see that right there in Jonah. God prepared a fish, God prepared a gourd, and God prepared a worm that took out the gourd. Heather said, God showed me a timeline of my life when I was a kid. It ends with the sky opening up in the uh, skin of an orange being peeled uh, back right before I look at a boy. That boy is my son, Micah, who looks exactly like he does now. Wow. Amen. Wow. Praise God. She saw things when she was a kid. And Micah has seen dreams. The Lord has blessed that in that family. And Jonah was mentioned in 2 Kings. Amen. Hallelujah. 
I love it. Exciting stuff, Heather. Exciting stuff. Amen. All right. So Hurricane Lee's out there. It's all over the place. He said he sees it. Uh, Sean saw it several times, but he just popped up a, a sample for us to check out tonight. Okay. So it says, Hurricane Lee to the USA on the seventh day. And then the Bible verse running through there is Deuteronomy 30, 15. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity and death and adversity. So it looks like this dude's coming in as a warning. I don't know where it's going to hit just yet. And the weather makers and the weather men, the meteorologists are kind of giggling about it. And what are they saying? Several of them have already said it's in beast mode. Lee is now in beast mode, the beast out of the sea mode. Okay. Yeah, we are right here. Amen. The area size of this little table that he presented is 473, which means the Lord thunders. Heather, we got some more thunder here in this little code. The Lord thunders. Um, you ever been in a hurricane? You'll get some thunder in a hurricane. You want to be in Lee, the safe side of that hurricane, out of the wind, out of the storm, out of the trouble. When all these people hearing Lee, 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 and they're going to face the storm and it's going to take them out. Not just this one, but the one it's a precursor to saying, here comes the big one. Lee, 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 Lee. And they're not getting into Lee. They're not getting on the safe side. I encourage you. Jesus Christ is the safe side. The boat is the safe side. Well, this little table that he presented is 473. That's the area size. That's how many cubes are in it. Going this way and going this way. The Lord thunders. The Lord thunders. And the word death crosses hurricane. So it looks like there may be death here or it may be pointing to a future death. I don't know just yet. He, was, he just shared that with me. Uh, while I was in, ending up finishing up work, man. And boom, boom, boom. Here it is this fast. And then just in the last hour, Morocco has had a terrible uh, earthquake and it hit four times, four different earthquakes, a 6.9 and had videotape. See, my wife stays very astute to earthquakes because that's what she suffered there when she was living in Mindanao in the Philippines. They have them all the time. When I was there, just before our wedding, I, I went there in December. We got married in August and we were in the middle of the one of the churches we were looking at to have a wedding. We didn't have it there. Presbyterian, blech, gross. But we went there and a 7.0 rings out. Here goes the chandeliers just to doing this. And right across the street was a mall. And these people come running out, ah, screaming. Praise God, everything was fine. But today in Morocco, it wasn't fine. People were partying around 11 o'clock after between 11 and midnight. And all of a sudden it hit. God's telling a story. Four earthquakes. Get ready for that number four rapture door. Amen. Amen. We like that number four around here. Amen. God keep us safe. So I just wanted to share that with you. Death is crossing hurricane in that particular small area code where the Lord thunders. Three or 473. 473, the Lord thunders. God thundered. So we're keeping an eye on this, Lee, and we encourage you, get in the boat. Get in Jesus. Get on the safe side of the storms of life. Get out of the wind. Get out of the treachery. Okay? All right. Let's look at that code Vondo's got us looking at here. This is from May 30th. I'm scrolling down to see what, it, what it's called here. Uh, the wrath against the living was swift. The wrath, and it's a Noah code. It's a, we're right here, guys, repeating. God is repeating just like he did in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Lot. You got, oh, guys, what's really cool is both of those stories are found in Genesis. You don't have to go far. But the church today won't even read the book of Genesis. To find out what this is talking about. Lee. Just a simple name. A lot of people are named Lee. Girls are named Lee. Boys are named Lee. And people don't even know that God's telling you, get out of the storm. The storm there's a storm coming and you need, 
to be on the safe side of this thing, the raptured side. Be saved in Jesus Christ. The rapture is a coming. A little rapture, Garrus. Yeah, four earthquakes. Get ready. Yeah, rapture door, Garrus. I hear you, bub. All right. So here's the commentary. Sean, Sean comments. He says, The story of Noah's Ark in the Bible contains profound symbolism that points to Jesus Christ and his redemptive work. It not only portrays salvation, but also foreshadows the future hope that the church will have in the rapture. Our salvation. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're almost there, kids. This code illustrates Noah's Ark as a shadow and a pattern of the wooden cross of Jesus Christ, represent, representing salvation and as a type and shadow of the rapture of the church, all while overlaying the sudden destruction of New York City by a flood. This is a perfect example of Lee. You can either be in New York City and die that night, or you can be in New York City and be raptured that night. If you're in Jesus Christ, you're in the boat and you'll be saved from the storm. Jesus wants to rapture you, man. Firstly, Sean continues. Firstly, the ark serves as a shadow of salvation, reflecting God's response to divine judgment and his extension of grace. In the time of Noah, humanity's wickedness led to impending judgment. However, God showed grace to Noah and his family, preserving them from the flood. Similarly, all of humanity faces judgment for sin. But God offers salvation and grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Just as Noah and his family found refuge in the ark, Jesus Christ is our refuge and shelter Lee. Hello? Is everybody listening? Jesus is our safety and our shelter and our refuge right now, man. And he offers salvation by grace. He is our refuge and shelter from the consequences of sin. Through faith in him, we find salvation and deliverance. Lee. The role of wood in the construction of the ark holds particular significance. This is important because, you know, we, we count every year during the Feast of Pentecost, the last six days of the 153 days are counting the wood offering. Wood is vital to the Lord. Without wood, you couldn't have fruit. You couldn't have nuts. Fruits and nuts grow on the trees, man. You got to have wood. And so it's so vital to, you know, the almond harvest, just all the trees. The summer fruit mentioned about in the book of Amos. So the, the role of wood in the construction of the ark holds particular significance. The ark was made of gopher wood in Genesis 6.14 symbolizing the judgment and sacrificial nature of the cross. In the New Testament, we see a parallel with the wooden cross upon which Jesus Christ was crucified for our sin. Uh, and also the ark made of wood brought salvation to Noah and his family, foreshadowing the salvation brought by the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ to all who believe in him. Get on that side of the cross. Believe, believe, believe. No self-righteousness, guys. You in no wise can get you to heaven in any way. You are helpless. You are worthless. You are in need of a savior. You need saving. You need somebody outside of yourself, an outside source to save you. And God is that source. And salvation is a free gift offered to you by God himself. He gave up his only, his dearest one, his son. And he sent him to earth and pinned everybody, everybody's sin, all sin for all time upon him. And he suffered terribly. You know how you suffer with just one memory of your stupid sin? How it haunts you? All that was placed on Jesus and he's already suffered. And for you to think you're going to help him out is a slap in his face is a stomp on him, on his corpse, while he lay a-dying. That's it's sacrilege, man. Salvation is a free gift. You believe that he did this for you. Yes, in agreement. You believe in agreement. Yes, yes, yes. The Bible account, that preacher over there who's preaching the Bible account, I believe, I believe, yes, and be saved. Heather says, this is the code that mentions the seedling was a defect. USA, rotten from the start. Amen. Amen. I, no, have you ever heard a preacher preach that? 
Or do you, do you hear him saying, No, this was one of two nations dedicated to the Lord. One was Israel and the other was the United States. When those Puritans jumped off the boat, they got together the pilgrims and they dedicated this land to the Lord. Now, you guys know that the Puritans and the pilgrims were Calvinist and they dedicated this land to the devil. You guys know, as Jerusalem belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ, belongs to the Father, that's his city on earth, Switzerland belongs to Satan. And Geneva belonged to John Calvin. John Calvin, he's the JC of that satanic belief system. And we're encouraging you to follow after the proper JC of Nazareth. Okay, And when those pilgrims jumped off that boat and they dedicated this land to the Lord, they were dedicating it to the devil. And don't be stupid as Paul Bagley and the rest of those idiots, all those Calvary Chapel preachers preaching that, oh, sweet land of liberty, oh, Lord, we're your people. We've never been his people. The only people who are his people are believers who've come out of Babylon who have recanted their Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, and now our Pledge of Allegiance is to one Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen? All right. A uh, very powerful code says, Stefan, what are you talking about, brother? Uh, Sean made progress. I went over his photos today and seen Bible codes from 2016. They looked old and ancient. Yeah, that's where he was beginning his stuff. That's where we started here, dude. When we started going through all the Bible codes, that's where we started was back with those, the way he used to do them, and he's perfected them. And he, But the way he used to do them is per perfect in God's eyes. God said his codes are perfect, and he sees as God sees. Amen? Hallelujah. Gary says, many believers having rapture dreams with a full moon. A little one, maybe? September 29? How about that? They kick off to things. That is definitely a little, and it's going to be an a little rapture. <clears throat> and that's the fourth supermoon, the fourth sign for the fourth candle. Very well could be, my brother. Very well could be. September 29. Keep looking up. By God's grace, we'll be up that night. We'll have a watch night service. And the next week, too, if need be, and following. Praise God. Good point, brother. All right. So we, we got Noah. We got Jesus uh, is representing. And he was crucified for our sins, man. Aren't you thankful for that? And Jesus Christ wants to save all who will believe in him. Furthermore, Noah's Ark serves as a type and shadow of the rapture. Now you're talking my lingo. Amen? We got, we got that three phases of salvation. The cross did, did that. When you place your faith in Jesus Christ, he takes care of your justification. He makes you as though you have never sinned one day in your life. And you'll never, in God's eyes, appear as though you've sinned one day in your life when you've been covered with the blood and infused with his righteousness. Is that awesome or what? On the cross, he took care of your justification. That's what that, that's called. Just as if you had never sinned. He also took care of your sanctification, where he sets you apart from the world unto himself, solely unto himself, under his wing, for him to protect you. And you could receive his protection 24-7. And then you could walk in that sanctification, live it out by reading the Bible and obeying it, and becoming more like Jesus Christ. That's his, his goal for you, is that his image be conformed in you. And the word of God will do that. And Vandal's put up the three phases of salvation right here. And that third phase is the rapture. Okay? With salvation, with justification, comes glorification. It's all one awesome free package. Amen? So it serves as the rapture. It shadows, it shadows the rapture, which is a future blessed hope of the church. Noah and his family were set apart, sanctification, right? Set apart from the world over here to God. They were set apart from the wickedness of their generation, chosen to, to be preserved from the judgment. Similarly, the rapture involves believers being separated from the world. Lee, out of the storm, out of the wind. Lee me up, Lord. Lee me up. Separate me physically. And he will. He's going to pull us right out of the storm while New York and the East Coast is going down. Destruction. 
uh, the rapture involves believers being separated from the world and caught up to be with Jesus Christ. That's 1 Thessalonians 4.17. As for shadowing of the rapture, the ark represents the separation of the righteous from the unrighteous. God wants that in your heart right now. That's what he did. The very first thing he did on the creation, he created light and divided light from darkness. And that's been his plan ever since, separating light and darkness from each other. And the Christian church wants to dive right into the darkness and call it gray. Fifty shades of gray. Fifty shades of filthy gray. There is no gray. God said it's light or dark. And he separated it on the first day and said, now you walk in the light as he is in the light. It's important for us to obey him, guys, and understand this doctrine. The Southern Baptist doesn't teach this. The Presbyterians and the Methodists and all those people don't teach this. The Catholics don't teach this. Separation, light and dark. There's only two sides. You're either in the light or you're in the dark. God wants us walking in the light as he is in the light. The unexpected timing of the flood in Noah's time is also similar to the un unexpected nature of the rapture in the day of the Lord. The people of Noah's time were preoccupied with worldly pursuits and uh, not at all anticipated the flood until it came. Similarly, the rapture and the day of the Lord will come unexpectedly to the lost world like a thief in the night and the unexpected saved world. Whew. Church ain't even looking. They, they, here's how Satan has loved it. It's starting to cool off and it's football season. Pumpkin spice. Halloween's coming up, you know. I don't believe we'll make it to Halloween this year. The last day of Elul is October 27th. And there's going to be a bunch of Christians who had their Halloween yard decorated up for the last month when Jesus Christ comes to show up on the scene and rapture folks. And you're going to be raptured because God's grace is so full and so good. And once saved, always saved. And it's a free gift and it's all about mercy. When you're raptured, you're going to have a yard full of devil stuff. Left over. So stupid. We encourage you to wake up. My buddy was telling me his church up in Paragould, Arkansas, this past week, the associate pastor, they have several pastors and they rotate the, the preaching. One of the pastors preached on Harry Potter and how his death and resurrection was represented by Jesus Christ. Now, do you guys know that the death, burial, and resurrection of Harry Potter has everything to do with the Antichrist and nothing to do with Jesus of Nazareth? God hates wizards. He tells you that over and over and over. Just in the first books, Exodus, Leviticus, God hates wizards. And they're up there preaching a whole series on Harry Potter. My buddy went and talked to the lead pastor about it. And he said, dude, that was so wicked. That was so evil, blah, blah. And the pastor said, no, 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 no. It really was a good good adaptation and he, he used good points and it was all pointing to God's glory in the resurrection. Deception, deception, deception. Alicia says, don't forget E.T. movie starts a couple of days before Halloween when a UFO hits, when it lands on the ground. Yep. Praise God. There is evil Halloween filth everywhere around here already. So ready to go home with all the kids. Me too, sister. The pure hearts of the kids. I had a guy telling me his baby is due on the a Christian kid, Baptist kid, whose baby, his first baby's due on the 30th, and he's really hoping it comes is born on Halloween. His grandmother loved Halloween so much. Anton LaVey said, I am so thankful that Christians let their children worship Satan one day a year. Because he knows what Halloween's all about. Methodist Church here in Jonesboro had Harry Potter Day at their church and preached the same thing. Wizard, glorifying wizards and witches and goblins and ghouls and spellcasters with Hollywood wands in their hands. Mm -mm -mm. Lastly, the remnant that was saved going through the, the ark in Noah's time, that was the eight souls alive. Noah, his wife, the three sons and their wives, eight of them were saved. It parallels the gathering of the church during the rapture. Only a small remnant 
found salvation in Noah's time, while the rest of humanity perished. Similarly, the rapture will involve the gathering of the church, which is the, just the true believers, not everybody who attends the church. But the true believers, while the world faces tribulation and judgment. Get aboard the ark now, the ark of salvation, by placing your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth before it's too late. He's our only safety from the wrath of God. Lee! Lee! Ida! Leah! Lee! It's being hollered out. Meteorologists everywhere. And ain't nobody sheltering themselves from the storms in Jesus Christ. I'm encouraging you to. I'm encouraging you to tell other people about it. Amen? Let's see here. Let's look at the code itself. Here's the code. Translation. God's Word and His Dialect by Sean Mitchell, who discovered it. And it's perfect when it got here, it said. God's Word. His Dialect. The wrath against the living was swift. Whew. A tsunami a mile high at 600 miles an hour. You think that's going to be swift? Quicker, quicker than this flood. And God says that flood was swift. The reason it came was not to put an end to the earth, only the perverse one, the Nephilim. Only the Nephilim. God, God wanted to drown all the Nephilim and save the human genome, the perfect human genome made in the image of Adam. He wanted to preserve that. And he did it with those eight souls. Sorry, Rob Skiba. Rob Skiba said he's in hell. Rob Skiba's in hell. He was an independent Baptist that went Hebrews roots, nutty, flat earth, freaky, cultish, okay? And people follow him. Thousands still follow this guy, okay? So he died of COVID a couple of years back, went straight to hell. And uh, his doctrine was just fried. And he preached that one of the wives... Was, had Nephilim blood in her. Because that's how the Nephilim came about in Genesis 11 with Nimrod. Lie, 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 lie. How it came around for Nimrod is exactly what Jurassic Park taught you it did. They extracted some DNA just like the mark of the beast, the genetic marker, and they pumped Nimrod filled. They put him full of DNA from deceased Nephilim bodies. And he became a gibberim, a giant himself. That's how it happened. Because God told us that the people he preserved on the ark were the human, 100% human genome. They were all pure in their genealogies, in their bloodlines. No Nephilim in them. And his purpose was not to destroy the earth. It was to wipe out the Nephilim, the perverse ones. Continuing on. Jehovah was a shield to the life of Jehovah. God himself wanted to protect the life that he gave. Remember, he breathed into Adam's nostrils. God made Adam, and there he was, just a dead corpse, a fresh dead corpse. But God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul. And that's what God was protecting, the living souls of humanity that he initiated, that he created and started. Amen. Behold, they are from the wooden ark. It is the song of those awaiting me in the coastlands of Noah. They're singing it. The people in heaven are singing the song of Moses and the Lamb, singing the song of Noah. Sean Mitchell is Noah. Sean Mitchell is Moses. And they'll be singing the song of the, people, the children uh, who weren't saved with us. And they weren't raptured, but they believed later. And Sean's going to be be presenting the gospel to them, they're going to be saved and they'll be singing the songs of the Bible code. And they will be, be believing this very code. And this is a song of Noah, our Noah, presented to them how they can be saved. And they're going to find refuge in Jesus Christ a different way. They're going to believe in him. They're going to place their faith in him just as we did. And then upon seeing the trigger mechanism, Obama walking into the temple to declare himself to be God, they're all going to run in faith and they're going to be sheltered. They're going to be in an ark and God will take care of them. And this will be their song on the coastlands of Noah. Amen. The song of those awaiting me and, and that's Jesus Christ awaiting Jesus Christ. That's, that's the song they're, they're, the children of Israel are going to be awaiting his arrival. And they'll know that they are as Noah being preserved. Remember, 
when God said, this generation shall not pass, it's not talking about a fig tree 80-year generation. It's talking about the generation, the genealogy of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Jews. They're not going to be snuffed out no matter how hard Satan and Obama and the Pope try. And all the Muslim army, they're going to try to snuff them out, but God's going to have an ark of protection for them. And about six million or so will be saved and hidden in the day of trouble. <clears throat> the grieving of the flood, we will wonder. Why the flood, God? What, what was that about? What is Jesus? What is Yeshua? Well, he's Noah's Ark in this way. We will descend to the mountain, said the, the Nephilim, the, the fallen angels. We're going to descend down there to the mountain. And that is uh, the same Mount of Transfiguration, Mount Hermon, on the Syrian-Israeli border. Okay, I missed that conversation, bud. Uh, I see, I see Vondo's answer. Hey, bub, don't you know that you are a lay person? You don't know anything, don't you? Or date? Yeah, no kidding, no kidding. Yeah, guys, do you know what the sin of the Nicolaitans is in the Bible that God hates? Putting a difference between the preachers and the laity. The preachers, we're great up here on this platform and you're not. We know things and you don't. You, you guys are stupid and we're so wise. Well, I was told if you have the Holy Spirit of God in you, he in gifts you and we're all one in the Spirit of God. We're one new man. It ain't us and them. And God hates that kind of thing. That's why he hates the Catholic Church. Because the Pope, I, I'm great and you guys ain't. The Cardinals, we're great and you're not. The uh, bishops, we're awesome and you guys are terrible. You got to confess to us. The priest, oh yeah, you guys are a bunch of low life. You need to tithe to me and confess to me and bring me your booze and your little boys. Okay? God hates that with a passion. And that happens in many churches where the preachers are great and the laity are stupid. Right? Is that where you're going with that, Vondo? Pastors in the church have to, the words you need to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, we're all one in, in the Lord. Okay? Every one of you are shepherds, your parents, you lead your flock. Get that crown. Lead your flock well. Lead them to Jesus, okay? And uh, that whole, the sin of the Nicolaitans, God hates it. Us and you. There is no us and you. Paul didn't act that way, dying in prison. Getting beat up, getting stoned, getting shipwrecked, okay? He, he didn't act that way. He's, we're one in the Spirit. We're one in the Lord, Amen. And so God's talking here. He says, the wrath against the living was swift. The reason it came was not to put it into the earth, only the perverse one. Jehovah was a shield to the life of Jehovah. He protected humanity Behold, because he was protecting Jesus. Satan was trying to wipe out the seed of Adam. He was trying to wipe out the one who could save them all, the perfect human. And if he could wipe out humanity, well, then there would be no perfect human. So God was preserving himself. God was preserving Jesus in preserving Noah and the other seven. Okay? The life of Jehovah, Jesus. Behold, there from a wooden ark, it is the song of those awaiting me in the coastlands of Noah. The grieving of the flood, we will wonder. Why the flood, God? What is Yeshua? He is Noah's ark in this way. And then the Fallen angels said, we will descend to the mountain. The watcher became inferior. They lost their angel status. And they became inferior. They, they went from being blessed to being cursed. They went from being high and lifted up to being the fallen ones. Okay? And so, they uh, descended to the mountain. The watcher became inferior. The lament. He was aware of the wicked one bearing fruit. The Lord knew what Satan was up to and was trying to wipe out the human gene home. And they were doing it. They were accomplishing it. And there weren't too many people left that were pure bloods, pure human. So God took Noah. And in that 120 years he was building that boat, it was only getting worse and worse and worse to the point where nobody wanted to enter the boat. And God preserved the human genome through those eight people, those four couples. And he, God was highly aware of that wicked one who was bearing fruit and sowing seed of Nephilim, a saturating defect, and Satan's hand corrupts the beast. 
And it was Satan. We read about that in the book of Jasher. They were splicing DNA here and there, making chimeras. And Satan was opposing God when God says, and every plant will bear fruit after its kind. And every human and every animal will bring forth after its kind. And Satan said, I've got a different kind in mind. I'm going to mix a tree and some, a human and call it Groot. True science against God. And you people, you go to your movies and you just love Groot. You love baby Groot. And you think it's so awesome. God thinks it's so disgusting and he hates it with everything in him. And you and I need to learn to hate what he hates. And he was very aware that Satan was spreading this seed and bearing fruit of these Nephilim all across the world. It was a saturating defect. Satan's hand corrupts all the beasts. The foreigner is the breeder of the Nephilim, the fallen angels, were breeding with human women, okay? They, they were foreign to the humans, just like what's going to happen here at the uh, in the tribulation. It's going to go on just like this, and there will be savage raping, Nephilim raping women, and boys and girls and whatever else is born. It's going to be terrible, guys. Pray for the little ones who were born after the rapture nine months later. Pray for them. Pray for them now. Lord, get them to safety. Don't let them be harmed. The strength of the angel's day, genealogy, genealogy, genealogy. That's what the whole Noah's flood was all about. Preserving the human genome, the perfect ones without defect. Jehovah's nest is Noah's rest. Noah means rest. Rest is Noah. So Jehovah's nest is rest. Are you ready to go to Jehovah's nest? Who's ready to, you know, fly like a bird and pitch and land in Jehovah's nest? Anybody? Hello? Hello? We're going to do that. And so will the folks in the tribulation. When they believe, God's going to have a nest of rest for them, a hiding place. Because they believed the preaching of Sean Mitchell and the Bible Codes and the 144,000 witnesses. Check this out. The USA was in distress. It's kind of the same kind of verbiage that Sean was finding in some of these Hurricane Lee codes. Distress. Warning. Warning. The USA was in distress. Her seedling was a defect. There you go, Heather. America started out wrong. It was never a godly nation. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jehovah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Never! They dedicated their land to Satan at the beginning because they served a false Jesus. Another Jesus with another gospel. The foreigner is for the breeder of Nephilim and the strength of the angels day genealogy. The perfect ones without defect. Jehovah, his nest is rest. The USA was in distress. Her seedling was a defect from the time she started. The Lord was wroth against you to destroy you like Sodom and Gomorrah on the day. Now he's talking to, he's talking to the USA because Sodom and Gomorrah wasn't destroyed for Noah's day. Okay, we've now come to the future. We have Noah for a background, for a setup, and now we've come to modern day where God's a, where we are right now today. We're, we're at today, this very day. Listen what God says to you today and harden not your hearts. The Lord was wroth against you to destroy you like Sodom and Gomorrah. On the day, Russia is my fire against her. It is extensive. The atomic bomb is for her. New York City, he strikes God. God strikes the rebellion of the wicked one with a curse. He, God, destroyed USA. He destroyed New York City. He destroyed the United Nations building. It was God who did this and will have done this. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we see the Genesis passages, Genesis 9, Genesis 6. Leviticus 11, read those verses. Amen. Let's look at another one really quick, like if it's possible. This is June 8th. The recorder sends a pure one for the rapture. The recorder is God himself. He records everything, your hairs, everything. And he sends the pure one for the rapture. Well, that would be Jesus. He sends Jesus to the cloud and he raptures us. But he also sent a, another recorder. Sean Mitchell, who he calls the pure one. And we're all pure ones, guys. If you're saved, you're a pure one. Amen? God doesn't see you as wicked and vile. 
You've been justified just as if you had never sinned one day in your life, just as though you had always lived pure. God's awesome. Sean says, I searched for the term rapture in Genesis and found this code wrapping 16 times around Genesis. The numbers do not lie. God will divide the light from the darkness. What? That's what he desires in everybody. No gray area. Light and darkness, pal. God will divide the light from the darkness. The end is in the beginning. Hallelujah. This verse runs to the main term right before New York. Genesis 28, 12. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set upon the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And here's the code by Sean Mitchell, the only official guy in the entire universe who's been commissioned by God, anointed by God, called by God, and been given gift, the gift to do this. And he's the recorder on earth. Recording for God. Translation, God's word in his dialect. The recorder, God, sends the pure one for the rapture. That's going to be Jesus. But he also sent to us before the rapture a pure one to write of this and give us these 400 and however many there are now. There will be 474. Okay? The recorder sends the pure one to, for the rapture. Swift salvation, Yeshua. He's the pure one who comes to the clouds and saves us all, raptures us in that third phase of salvation. If you're saved, you get this part included. You will be raptured. Hallelujah. You don't have to be perfect, guys. You've been made perfect. Now relax and walk in that and stay in the light. Don't keep wandering back to the darkness. Don't keep going back to your drugs. I've got a guy at work. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, when he's talking to me. And I found out he hasn't changed a bit after coming out of rehab. He's still a drunk. He's still cheating on his wife. And he's a liar alcoholic liar and all the sinners at work know that he's a sinner and we the saved thought he was saved and acting walking righteous and holy god hates a hypocrite no hypocrites liars abusers of themselves fornicators what does it say will enter the city i pray that he's really been saved by jesus christ he sure ain't acting like it and he sure doesn't seem to mind it one bit or care they're all over the place, guys. Gary says, come soon, Lord. We love you. Kim says, praise God, most high. Amen. Amen. So back to God talking here. He's sending Jesus at the rapture. Are you ready? Amen. The recorder sends the pure one for the rapture. Swift salvation, Jesus. So now, my son, hear my voice and rise. The spirit of Jehovah is Jehovah's truth and validation. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So the spirit of Jehovah is prophecy. And what does he say about this prophecy? It's truth and validation. You better know it. The terror of New York is the earthquake. The slain of the city is a holocaust. It's going to be worse than nobody. Nobody has ever come to their mind how bad this is going to be. And, of course, the narcissist, Barack Obama, and the Pope, and all the rest of them, they're going to have drones everywhere recording this thing. Satellites from above. They want to see it, just like Benghazi. They want to watch it live. Genesis seven nineteen seven nineteen, And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered, just like New York City and that whole coastline is going to be. However far God de desires to define the new borders. God is about to draw some new borders in the United States of America until America is only islands. We're referred to as the islands all the way through the Bible. All right, let's read that translation again. God's word in his dialect, we'll call it a night. The recorder, this is an official code by Sean Mitchell. He's the only guy in the universe who's qualified and called to do it, to unseal what John the Apostle could not unseal and reveal. The seven thunders of God, we have six of them in our hands. Do you understand what I'm saying? Will you please read these things and love them and embrace them and 
have your doctrine match what's found in the pages of that book, the ebook. Vondo puts the link up here every night. Download that ebook and come to know it, the six thunders of God. And here's a portion of that thunder, God's word in his dialect. The recorder, God records everything, that's him, sends the pure one for the rapture, that's Jesus Christ. Swift salvation, Jesus. So now, my son, hear my voice and rise. The spirit of Jehovah is Jehovah's truth and validation. That's this Bible code. So God, the recorder, has another recorder, the pure one, Sean Mitchell, record all these things. They are truth, they are validation, and he's the only one who's written about the terror of New York as the earthquake and the slain of the city as a holocaust, being destroyed by Poseidon nukes and everything else, revealing God's thunder, his truth, his heart to us. So the Jews in the tribulation could know that we knew in advance and this is the work of God and it's a sign and they need to go ahead and fast track their belief. And I wish you Christians would, but Christians are the hardest ones to believe anything. They don't even read their Bibles. They say they believe, but I don't even know what the Bible says. I believe every word of that Bible and don't know what it says. I encourage you to read 10 to 20 chapters every day. You know what it says. You know the heart of God and get familiar with this book, Bible Codes Unsealed, The Six Thunders of God. And Sean will write that seventh and he'll reveal the seventh thunder in the tribulation. There'll be many more codes that are being produced then and we'll get to see him in heaven. We'll be sitting ringside live being right here. Amen. You know, we know Sean's one of the witnesses, Moses, Elijah. We don't know who the other person is, but every one of us will be as though we are that other witness in heaven, watching it up. We're going to witness it all, except for the fact you won't have to be blown away and ambushed. Okay, we're going to be sitting there watching these guys do their thing. We're going to be cheering them on. This is great. Down there in the Bible room, that's where we stay right now, isn't it? The Bible room, we see all these things by faith. Then we'll be seeing it live action. Boom, boom, boom. While we're in the Bible room, the Bible will be live. And right now it's live because it's talking about, you know, Hurricane Lee. That's pretty live. It hadn't hit land yet. It's that live and it's that futuristic and it's right here at us. Amen. I love you guys. Let's pray. We got a couple codes out of the way plus an unproduced one. Start from the beginning if you didn't hear this. Uh, Hurricane Lee. The safe side of the storm, out of the wind, the wind block, the protection. God's trying to warn everybody. There's a bigger storm than this one coming. This one's pretty magnanimous, but the one that's a coming after this one, woo! You don't want to be here for that. You want to be Lee. Be Lee. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, we love you. We're so grateful for your word. Plain text and that coded text. Help us to help us to be faithful to you, to your faithfulness, and keep us uh, in your path. Keep us in your walk, away from the devil's ideas and his ways. And I pray for every one who's been captivated by the Jezebel spirit, that you will correct them. You'll take them to the woodshed, and you will have them know they are wrong. Have them repent in sackcloth and ashes. And I pray that everybody will come out, will all have innocent hearts like brand new babies and be sweet and pure before you and find our place in the body. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for including all three phases at belief. You're so amazing. Your gift is awesome. And we are so grateful to have received it. Thank you for your wonderful offering of the greatest of your, of your heart you gave to us gave in place of us so we could be your heart thank you for your love for us thank you for the wonderful trade-off lord the divine trade-off we're so grateful we're thankful for these codes tonight we're thankful for that storm out to sea we know you're directing it whithersoever you will and you will have your way in the storm thank you for shelter thank you for the ark thank you for the cross thank you for the wood offering to provide us shelter, eternal shelter, away from the storms of the devil, never having to face that booger again. We love you. We thank you. I pray for everybody listening to my voice right now that you'll bless them 
in your spiritual truth, your divine prophecy in their hearts, quicken us, sharpen us in all things holy, in all things righteous, in all things your word. We pray your blessing on Sean. Protect him, protect his body, his heart, his mind. Give him joy in the revelation of these codes like you always do. He's always marveled. He's always just amazed at your goodness. And keep him that way, Lord. I pray you'll encourage his heart in the days ahead, getting ready to see his mother again, and all of us meeting in the air. That's going to be a joy. It will all be that one new man glorified in you. I can't wait. And we pray for everybody listening that you'll bless us at the at our personal levels and as a corporate body that we'll walk together, we'll walk in agreement with you and we'll be listening for your small, still voice and we'll do what you say and walk holy before you, Lord, in the light and get out of the darkness. Pull everybody that's hearing my voice out of the darkness. Convict them of their wickedness, of their sinfulness, of their feet dragging, of their laziness, of their procrastination, whatever it is that's keeping them in the gray and the dark I pray you'll reveal it to them now, break their hearts, burn their hearts, and pull them out. Snatch them as a brand from the fire. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, guys. Love you. Brother George, love you, buddy. God bless you guys.